If you're watching this episode, you're probably wondering if the Google Data Analytics Certificate will ever lead to an actual data job. Well, I'm here to tell you that it can, but rarely on its own. In this episode, I'll walk you through how my internet friend Goob Goob landed an $80,000 data analyst job that's completely remote just 52 days after taking the cert. If you're new here, hello, my name is Avery Smith and I'm a data career coach and my job is to help you become a data analyst. Let's talk about my friend Goob Goob though. Goob Goob was a former accountant and he had started the data analytics certificate on July 27th and just a mere 52 days later, he had secured a completely remote data analyst offer paying $80,000 plus benefits. Basically, I got lucky. I finished the course on August 27th. I then applied for 10 jobs. The next day, I posted my resume on the subreddit resume for some feedback. Turns out my resume was terrible. After changing my resume, I applied to 40 more jobs and updated my LinkedIn. Out of those 50 total applications I put in, I got two interviews. I made it to the final interview for both jobs, but didn't get an offer. But since I updated my LinkedIn, a recruiter reached out to me. For context, I was an accountant and I have a degree in accounting. He was looking for someone with strong accounting knowledge and SQL slash Python skills. I was the perfect fit. I nailed the interview process and signed my offer letter yesterday. Now, if you listen carefully, you'll notice that it wasn't Goo Goop's data skills that landed him the job. Of course, he needed the skills to qualify for the opportunity, but really it was his career skills and his networking skills that ended up landing him the job. Networking is the third pillar of what I call the SBN method. In order to land a data job, you'll need to have the right skills, S, but you'll also need a portfolio and networking. And that's the P and the N. And the P and the N are actually just as important as the S's. And unfortunately, the Google Data Analytics Certificate all but completely ignores both the P and the N. So let's look at what Goob Goob did well. The first thing I noticed was he applied for 10 jobs and then he stopped. He realized, crap, the only thing that a hiring manager knows about me is my resume. So I better make sure I get some feedback and ensure that my resume is working for me. So he turned to the subreddit resume. Now Reddit is awesome and it sucks at the same time. It's one of the only places on earth where you can get niche help and honest information like this, but it's also full of anonymous pessimists who really like to troll. So your mileage is gonna vary on any sort of Reddit post you ever do in your life, especially about data analytics. But in this case, the Redditors were able to tell Goob Goob that his resume flat out sucked. And so he fixed it. That's lesson number one. You'll never be able to land a job if your resume sucks. So make sure that your resume is good before applying to lots and lots and lots lots of jobs. Now, we don't know what Goob Goob's resume looked like before he got the advice, but we do know what it looks like after he got the advice. So here is the updated resume on the screen. The first thing I notice is he has quite a bit of skill keyword stuffing. The automatic tracking system or the ATS is kind of dumb a lot of the time, and it sort of just thinks that the more you use a word, the better that you are at that skill. So for example, if you use SQL a lot on your resume, the better you are at SQL. So you'll notice that there is a lot of data skills, both in the summary, the skills, and even the experience and certification section. And this is great. It's also important to point out, as Goob Goob did, this isn't a fancy resume. There's no images or multiple columns or anything crazy going on. Most of the time, other than just plain black and white, single column paragraphs and bullets, it's bad for the ATS. A simple rule to remember is simplicity wins in the resume world. So make sure you're keeping your resume simple. Another thing Goob Goob does well in the resume is he quantifies his results. Managers want to hire people who get stuff done. And how do you get stuff done? Numbers. You should aim for at least two to four numbers in your experience section, showcasing what you've done in the past. Goop Goop mentions the numbers of invoices increasing from 87% to 98%, as well as saving $1,700 per month for the company, as well as presenting the dashboards to the clients four times per week. These are all great examples of quantifying your results. And you definitely need to be doing this on your resume. I also want to point out that this resume isn't perfect. I personally don't really love the layout very much and the order that things are in. And I also think it's missing a project section, but you'll also notice that some of the bullets in the experience section are in the past tense and the rest are in the present tense. You definitely would want to keep those consistent and not having those consistent shows a little bit of sloppiness and messiness. Also phrases like number of invoice entered into the system on time increase from 87% to 98% in one month is a bit cumbersome, but what's important is that done is better than perfect. So Goob Goob took that advice and started applying with this new resume. After 40 more applications, Goob Goob was lucky enough to land 
two data interviews. That's an application to interview ratio of about one to 25 or about 4%. And that's about average. The industry standard for this ratio varies anywhere from 2% to 7%. Basically two out of every hundred applications you apply for, you get an interview for. So basically you'll get two to seven interviews for every hundred jobs you apply for. Now there's things that you can do to increase your odds of landing more interviews. We'll talk about them down here below. So if you've applied for a hundred jobs and haven't landed one interview, something is probably wrong and it's likely to be your resume. And I highly suggest getting some feedback on your resume, whether it's from the resume subreddit, a trusted friend or a career coach. I do resume reviews if you need one and you can check the link down below to check it out. Another thing that Google Goop did that he failed to mention the original post but put it in the comments down below is not use the spray and pray method where you're just basically applying to as many jobs as you possibly can and just submitting your resume and letting it end there. Every time you submit your resume or you submit your application think of it not as the end of the application but actually the start because you can actually network with the job posters and other people at the company who are likely to help you. I talked about this in a previous episode with Trevor Maxwell, and there's so many of my bootcamp students who are able to cold message their way into interviews. So Gugu says, another thing I did was reach out to job posters after applying to the position. I'd introduce myself, provide them with my cover letter and resume. The success rate was low, but it did result in me getting one of the interviews I mentioned above. So this is that end part of the SBN method. If you can send a cold message, at least one for every job you apply for, you are stacking the odds in your favor. Goo unfortunately didn't get offers from either of these interviews. So Goo was kind of back to square one, but he decided to update his LinkedIn since that was one of the only other things that managers use to evaluate candidates. And after updating his LinkedIn, something amazing happened. Instead of Goob Goob applying to a job, a job applied to Goob Goob. That's right, a recruiter actually reached out to him. And this is amazing when this happens because instead of trying to prove your worth to a recruiter and showing them that you're qualified, the recruiter is seeking you out already and almost trying to show you how awesome the role and the company is instead. And that's something to really point out here, that this recruiter was looking for someone with an accounting background. And we know that Goob Goob has that accounting degree and later Goob Goob actually reveals that he currently works for a payroll company. A lot of aspiring analysts are always worried because they don't have data experience. Well, don't worry, because you're likely to have some sort of other experience that will actually set you apart from other candidates. When I was breaking into data from a chemical lab technician, I landed interview after interview in the chemistry and energy space. Why? Because I knew what kinetics was. I understood the anatomy of an atom and I could understand the business's jargon. Your past experience is actually what sets you apart not what weakens your application. Your easiest data job is the one that lies within your domain experience. So then one behavioral and one technical interview later, Goob Goob had the job. You too can land a data analyst job if you follow the SBN method like Goob Goob did. Learn the right skills, build projects that show proof of those skills, and then expand your network and your career skills so that you can have jobs applying to you instead of you applying to jobs. And if you wanna learn more about the SBN method, I have a full 40 minute presentation on what you should be doing skills wise, project wise, and networking wise. And you can find the link for that down below. Go check it out.